old China friend Henry Kissinger has died at 100. Now if only his failed foreign policy with China would die with him. A popular Chinese chef begs for forgiveness after publishing a video on egg fried rice. Yes, in China, even food has to be politically correct. And you may think pandas are just cute, roly-poly little bears, but they're actually Chinese double agents. Then more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Whenever you go online, you should be using a VPN like Surfshark to cover your tracks and protect your identity. I'll tell you more at the end. So there are few people in the world who've had as much of an influence on US foreign policy towards China as Henry Kissinger, who died this week at the age of 100. In the 1970s, Richard Nixon sent Kissinger to China on a secret mission to begin negotiating the normalization of relations. The theory at the time was that if the U.S. could get China on the side of the U.S., it would help the U.S. contain Soviet aggression during the Cold War. China was open, but there was one precondition. The U.S. had to stop recognizing Taiwan. You see, up until that point, the U.S. had recognized Taiwan, or the Republic of China, as the sole legitimate government of China. It didn't recognize the Chinese Communist Party as a legitimate government at all. As a precondition to starting the talks, China made the U.S. agree to the One China Principle, i.e. that there is only one China, and the Chinese Communist Party controls it. However, the U.S. did not recognize Chinese sovereignty over Taiwan. That's allowed unofficial relations with Taiwan to continue. But this was probably one of the single worst China foreign policy mistakes the U.S. ever made. Kissinger worked on the relationship under both Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford. But it wasn't until after Kissinger left government that the Jimmy Carter administration actually normalized relations with China. Kissinger was the founder of what's called the Engagement School of Diplomacy toward China. The idea was that if Western democracies would just engage more with authoritarian communist regimes, eventually Western values and principles would rub off on them. Unfortunately, that's not what ended up happening. Instead of liberalizing, China corrupted Western institutions like the World Bank, the United Nations, and the World Trade Organization. And it used the Western free market to build up its economy while exploiting the openness of Western countries to steal their intellectual property and destroy their businesses. China then used that technical know-how and money to build up its military and expand its influence operations all around the world. And with the technology China got from the West, it turned itself into a police state that commits genocide against its own people. Now you might think that a German-born Jew who escaped to the US because of rising discrimination against Jews in Europe would clearly see the Frankenstein he helped create. But apparently not, because he went back to China earlier this year where he was greeted by Xi Jinping as an old friend of China. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you ever go to China and the CCP calls you an old friend of China, you probably need to reevaluate your life choices. Being an old friend of China is a nice way of saying you've been a very useful idiot. And speaking of useful idiots, Charlie Munger. He died at the age of 99 this week, and now his death is being mourned in China. Munger is probably best known as Warren Buffett's friend and business partner at Berkshire Hathaway. He claimed the best investment he ever made for the company was investing in Chinese electric car maker BYD. Charlie, you bring up uh, BYD, so I'll jump to a question from Stephen Spencer, uh, who writes in from New York, New York. He, he's curious why Mr. Munger prefers an investment in BYD to Tesla. Well, that's easy. Tesla last year re reduced its prices in China twice. BYD increased its prices. We're direct competitors. We're so much ahead of BYD. I mean, BYD is so much ahead of Tesla in China. It's like a, it's just, it's almost ridiculous. You know what's also ridiculous? The amount of subsidies the CCP is giving to Chinese electric car makers. Yes, the Chinese government is actively supporting BYD and actively targeting Tesla. They've actually made Tesla no-go zones. Signs are popping up all over China telling drivers that if they're driving a Tesla, they gotta turn around. So Munger said BYD was better at actually making things than Elon Musk is. He wasn't really comparing apples to apples. More like apples to eggs. And speaking of eggs, after the break, how egg fried rice 
can get people really riled up in China. Welcome back. A Chinese celebrity chef has supposedly offended Chinese netizens by releasing a video on how to make egg fried rice. Now, that in and of itself wasn't a problem. What made it a problem was the date he released it on. Wang Gang published his video on November 27th, two days after the anniversary of the date that Mao's eldest son, An Ying, was supposedly killed during the Korean War. A persistent but frequently denied rumor says Mao An Ying was trying to cook egg fried rice instead of taking shelter, and the smoke from the fire exposed his positions to enemy forces. Now, the government has denied that's what happened. They say it was electric communication signals that were intercepted that led to him being found by the enemy. But nonetheless, the former editor-in-chief of my favorite state-run media, The Global Times, says the public opinion field should avoid touching the topic of egg-fried rice on that day. After the blowback from Chinese nationalists, Wang deleted the video and apologized. He blamed his team for publishing on that date, which I'll remind you, was not actually the anniversary of Mao's son's death. But deleting the video and apologizing wasn't enough, because he also promised he would never release another video about egg fried rice again. Apparently, this isn't the first time he's put out egg fried rice videos around this sensitive date. And in China, that's the kind of thing that can actually get you arrested. In 2018, China passed a law that criminalized insulting heroes and martyrs who died for the country or party. According to CNN, in 2021, a Weibo user in the southern city of Nanchang was detained by police for 10 days for commenting in a post that the greatest achievement of the Korean War is egg fried rice. For context, many believe that if Mao's son had survived, China might have ended up with a hereditary dictatorship like North Korea, which sounds bad, but I would say China's current system isn't all that great. What Nezen should actually be worrying about instead of egg fried rice is the economy. China's factory activity contracted at a quicker pace than expected last month. This is the second month in a row that Chinese Purchasing Managers Index, which shows China's factory activity, has contracted. Which is bad news for China because it relies on exports a lot more than most countries to keep its economy going. You can see here that compared to more developed countries like the US and UK, domestic consumption in China is a lot lower, which means China's got to make up for that by selling to other countries. But both Europe and the US are showing weak demand, and China's domestic consumption hasn't been able to fill the gap. And if that weren't bad enough, non-manufacturing activity hit yet another new low for the year, signaling that the world's second largest economy is not yet out of the woods. This has raised calls for more stimulus from the government. And you might think that a communist government would be all over this, since communism is all about from each according to his ability to each according to his need. But the Communist Party has avoided large-scale stimulus efforts since a blowback package in 2008 fueled a property bubble they're still dealing with today. And speaking of that property bubble, a subsidiary of Evergrande, one of China's largest property developers, is suing its parent company to recover assets seized by banks. The subsidiary, Evergrande Property Services, said it had $1.89 billion seized by banks as collateral and is suing for just $280 million of that. Now, all I gotta say is it better get its money from Evergrande fast because Evergrande's creditors are trying to liquidate the company. Evergrande has until next week to submit a debt restructuring plan to a court in Hong Kong. If it doesn't, or if the plan isn't good enough, it could be forced to sell all its assets. And after the break, is China's panda diplomacy ending? Welcome back. The UK is saying goodbye to its two remaining pandas, which are going back to China sometime this month. The Edinburgh Zoo is sending back Tian Tian and Yang Guang, which have been there for 12 years. China leased them out on a 10-year contract, but because of the pandemic, they couldn't be returned earlier when their contract expired. Now, it may seem like no big deal to be sending some pandas back, but to China, this is about much more than just pandas. You see, China claims all the pandas in the world belong to it, and in order to keep its monopoly on the species, it only rents pandas out to other countries. Even babies that are born to rented pandas abroad are still owned by China. It's a win-win deal for China. It doesn't have to pay for upkeep of the animals, and zoos pay them hundreds of thousands, if not millions, a year to have them. 
For example, the Edinburgh Zoo said it was paying half a million dollars a year to rent the pandas. Usually zoos want the pandas because they're big money makers. But recently, zoos have been sending their pandas back once their contracts expire. The US National Zoo in DC just sent three pandas back to China last month after their 10-year contract expired. The official explanation the zoo gave was that it wanted to protect more endangered animals around the world, and that pandas have gone from endangered to vulnerable thanks to conservation efforts. But soon America might have no pandas. The last four pandas still in the US are expected to be returned by the Atlanta Zoo next year. My favorite state-run media, The Global Times, called out the Telegraph for saying that this was because of deteriorating relations with China. Which I have to say is pretty rich considering that China is the one that treats pandas as political bargaining chips. That's how the term panda diplomacy came about. In fact, when Nixon came to China in 1972, Mao promised to give the US two pandas. Another thing we have Kissinger to thank for. During the APEC summit in San Francisco last month, she said China dangled the prospect of sending more pandas to the US as a sign of friendship. So does that mean that China wasn't feeling the friendship before? Color me shocked. The White House said it would welcome back China's pandas, saying it was China that wanted them returned in the first place. However, the Global Times says some media were defaming China by saying it's taking advantage of giant pandas in response to current diplomatic relations. Well, if your country's leader is talking in a political setting about US-China relations and using pandas to smooth things over, I'd say that sounds about right. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, everything you do is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider and in many cases, by your government. That's why no matter where you live or what you do online, you should always be keeping your internet activity private with a VPN. Surfshark has servers you can connect to in over 100 countries, more than any other VPN. That makes your connection faster and more reliable. Plus, Surfshark has top-of-the-line encryption and a no-logs policy, meaning they don't collect your browsing data. That's why Surfshark was rated editor's choice for the best VPN for privacy and security by PC Mac. So check out Surfshark. With just one Surfshark account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out now because this month you can get the Surfshark holiday season deal. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and get up to six additional months for free. That's surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored. The link is in the description. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.